Hello, everyone. This is Alex Sigrist of Pangeo Techno Valley TV. We're now going to begin the 2022 Pangeo monthly online meetup. This is with Pangeo in Korea, as well as Startup World representing the EU, and of course, all the companies that are represented here as well. Thank you so much for joining us. So Pangeo Techno Valley, a leading center of global innovation in Korea, draws attention from around the world. We also want to meet people from around the world, specifically media outlets, and kind of exchange ideas, but also share information about companies within Korea, specifically Pangeo Techno Valley. Uh, as we promote this on our Pangeo TV YouTube channel, uh, the Pangeo Techno Valley promotional channel and media outlets around the world, and of course, including uh, here in Korea as well. Uh, so we're very excited to create, to help create these opportunities that will uh, allow for the global promotion of companies in Korea, but again, also allow for a learning experience as well. So today's event is being conducted via Zoom and we are with Startup World, um, European media outlet specializing in startups. So first let's go ahead and go around the virtual room we have here and meet the people in attendance today. Uh, first up from Startup World, we have Clement Jean. Thank you for joining us. Hi, glad to be here. Thank you. Great, and look forward to hearing a little bit more about your uh, company in just a moment. Uh, we also have Bini Im of Cox Space. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hello. Hello. Um, we'll oh, be yeah. talking with you in just a moment, um, but a professional human interface company. Looking forward to information on that. We also have Jomuk Lee of Hills Robotics. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, indeed. Uh, and, and good morning, uh, maybe to Europe as well. Uh, we have uh, Jaebon Park, the CEO of Sam Corporation as well. Um, he will be joining us in a bit, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll keep, oh yeah, we'll keep going. Um, and we have Hugh or Hugh Kim or Kim Taeyong of Blue Feel. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Good afternoon. Um, we also have Noel of uh, the Plus Technologies. Thank you for joining us. Oh, is Noel? Uh, we'll talk to her in just a bit as well. She'll be fifth on the list. Uh, and then we also have Nubi Lab represented by Kim Hee Jong. So thank you for joining us, everyone out there. Uh, we will go ahead and get started. Uh, we're gonna do a quick little introduction of Pangeo Techno Valley. Um, and due to time, I'm just gonna be talking a little bit about it uh, rather than using a PowerPoint. If you want more information, we do have it up on our previous monthly meetups as well. The Pangeo Techno Valley is an R&D cluster centered on cutting edge industries such as IT, BT, CT, and NT here in South Korea, just 20 minutes south of Seoul by the subway. Um, and these are cutting edge injuries, uh, industries with 90%, 93% of businesses in these uh, cutting edge industries according to standards in 2022 or 2020. Um, the formation of first Pongo Techno Valley is complete. Second and third Pongo Techno Valleys are currently being constructed and put together. Um, and the second Pongo Techno Valley will be a fourth industrial revolution landmark that connects with the first and the uh, first Pongo Techno Valley where we are now. And the third Pongo Techno Valley uh, is going to be a smart finance hub and tailored housing complex. Uh, so Gyeonggi Do is con conducting various support businesses targeted at tenant companies like um, running community, startup nurturing, uh, residential rental deposit support, so that Pongo Techno Valley can continue to grow as a global R&D cluster. And by attracting more cutting edge companies through the establishment of the second and third Pongo Techno Valleys in Gyeonggi-do, um, as well as the various infrastructures, they plan to make Pongo Techno Valley uh, function as an industry 4.0 cluster. Now that is the brief introduction that we're gonna go over uh, for Pongo Techno Valley. 
Um, of course, you can find more information online as well. But there are a lot of people here with a lot of uh, companies to introduce we are, and media as well to, to learn a little bit about, especially in Europe. So why don't we go ahead and get started by going to our reporter, Clement Jean, who is going to be talking with us a little bit about uh, his organization, Startup World, as well as the tech and startup situation in the EU. So Clement, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. So at startup startupworld.tech, um, we are a new media, but we actually have a lot of experience in the startup scene in Europe, uh, but also in US. Um, we generally focus on international startups. Uh, so not really only in Europe, our focus is uh, like we live in Europe, but our focus is a little bit broader. And we generally do articles, uh, videos on uh, generally tech startup, but our focus, uh, once again, uh, we like innovation in general. So we do not only focus on, on tech. And um, I think um, each time I see Korean startup uh, pitching their products, I'm always uh, kind of excited because this is really different from what we see in Europe, uh, in the in the startup uh, scene in Europe. Um, in Europe, we see more innovation on the um, transportation, finance, insurance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, like kind of older industries. Uh, but I think in Korea and uh, some countries in Asia. Um, we see a lot of like digital innovation, um, manufacturing innovation, uh, biotech, healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. So each time I come to, to hear about a Korean startup, I'm always excited and I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you for joining us. You already answered my questions. I was curious a little bit about the differences between those, um, you know, the startups, and new innovative technologies in the EU versus Korea and Asia. Um, just to build on that, is there a difference, do you think, between the startup communities in the United States as compared to the EU or as compared to Korea and the rest of Asia? Like how does the US um, compare to, let's just start with Asia in, in this regard when it comes to startup and innovative technologies? I think uh, the, the first big difference is that they have big VCs. Um, they have more big VCs in in US, uh, so they can have more capital. Uh, in U in Asia, it's generally like developing now uh, more and more, uh, but it's still it's still behind what the US can do with their st their big startups. Uh, so I think that's the main difference. Um, and then I think in Asia, there is a lot more emphasis on um, security in the society, like, for example, um, like works on CCTV, um, vision AI, all this kind of stuff. Um, whereas in the US and in Europe, it's a little bit less developed, I think. Um, and the second um, important point in Asia, I think, is the innovation on manufacturing. Um, because we know that countries in Asia, um, like uh, Japan, like Korea, like China, developed on manufacturing. And there are still a lot of innovations uh, on this side. And I think um, the countries in the West are maybe a little bit less interested in that. Uh, than here, so we can see Asia taking the lead on on manufacturing, um, healthcare, security, etc. Okay, thank you so much uh, for the introduction as well as satisfying my curiosity. We appreciate uh, the insights into that. Uh, we are going to go ahead and get started and talk to our uh, first uh, our first company right now. Um, so. We're gonna start with, oh, excuse me one second. Kubuto. 
We're going to start with our first corporation. Um, If it's okay, we're going to go ahead and uh, switch up the order just a little bit then. Um, we're going to start with um, Hills, Ro Hills Robotics. Okay. We'll start with Hills Robotics first. Um, so sorry for the little switch up we're going on with right now, uh, but we're going to go with Dongwook Lee of Hills Robotics. Uh, and feel free at any point um, in the presentation, comment if you have any questions on anything related to uh, company, product, services, key references, target businesses in Europe, anything like that. Um, I encourage you to ask as many questions, and I'll ask a question at the end as well. Uh, so without further ado, John Lee, if you could join the conversation, we'd appreciate it. Okay, good afternoon and good morning. I'm Lee Jong-wook of Hills Engineering, uh, sorry, Hills Robotics. Uh, we're in the middle of changing our business name from engineering to robotics. Uh, do you guys can see the presentation screen. Okay, let me start. Uh, Hills Robotics was established in 2016, and ever since then, we have explored how to make better autonomous, autonomous mobility for robots. Uh, the, the guy on the left side is our boss, the CEO and the founder of this company, Austin. He worked for Korean Air and Emart and Samsung Tesco. The letter, the two, the e -Mart and Samsung Tesco are the local retail giants. <laughs> background in logistics area. That's why he, he decided to build this, decided to form this company. And we have also, uh, we have also have a bunch of R&D records for autonomous mobility and logistics robots. Uh, we have our headquarter in this, in here, Pangyo Startup Campus, and we have also R&D center in nearby area and factory as well. Uh, these, these guys are our executives. All of them uh, once worked at Samsung, one of the Samsung groups. And our lead researcher is also uh, once worked for Samsung Electronics. Uh, around 85% of our staff are technical experts. And we have a bunch of proud history, including the two consecutive, sorry, the CS 2021 Innovation Award and CS 2022 Innovation Award, uh, along with Red Dot Award 2021. And this year we will, uh, we are taking steps to export our main product to Indonesia. We signed PO recently and we're expecting more to come. Uh, we are developing autonomous mobile robot hardware and software at the same time. And the pictures on the bottom of the screen are our portfolio. And the left and the, the robot on the left side are, is our main product, the low robot, robot for logistics center or fulfillment center. Uh, so, uh, we have our own proprietary software to run this robot, which also offer the robot management system. Or our end client may choose the software of Move AI, which is a brilliant partner of us uh, who provides software as well. And we don't need any external markers on the ground to run this robot because we only use a slim based uh, solution and our proprietary software uh, replaces happy 3D LiDAR with uh, affordable ones. I'll explain it later. And our one of the main characters, one of the main strengths of our robot is the dual mode of driving. You can set its route or you can make it follow you. It'll give you more flexibility uh, to cope with unexpected changes on the ground. And you can attach a roll container like the picture on the bottom right side. Uh, this is an extension option. And this is, a, this is another uh, robot of us, which is being used in a municipal children's museum right now at the moment. Uh, this is a very little uh, short robot, uh, which can appeal to a children audience. And this is our robot for disinfection. 
especially the third one uh, with the name of the third type gave us last year's innova CES Innovation Award. Uh, this can kill virus with uh, disinfectant spray as well as heat air circulator. And this one gave us this year's CES Innovation Award. This can guide people and this can also disinfect nearby area. And uh, let me show you one of our promotional videos, which was filmed at one of our local clients. You can set its route or you can make it follow you. As you can see on the screen, uh, this is main, this, this robot is designed to be used uh, primarily in a fulfillment center where many workers have to pick items and put it on a robot. Uh, or if you don't have any robot, then put it on a cart. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and let me cover our strengths. Uh, the first one is our risk experience in logistics field. Uh, the, the previous form of this company was the engineering and logistics consulting agency. Uh, so we have like 30 more, 30 plus years of experience in logistics field. So we can understand well about how our end clients uh, solve their problems what they need, and we can provide the right solution to them with our hardware and engineers, as well as the solutions from our brilliant R&D partners. Now, some, of them come, some of them are tech firms in Silicon Valley, and the others are from Israel. And based on the rich experience in logistics on the ground, we designed, we ergonomically designed our robot. Uh, we know most workers Try to avoid bending over because they don't they don't want to have lower back pain. So we designed the cargo rack of our robot as the height of the average Korean worker weight type, and the width of the cargo rack of the robot is the average Korean worker's arm's length, so that we can minimize unnecessary movement of workers while along their work. And this is the core of our strength, uh, consisting of reliability and cost effectiveness. There may be robot makers out there who can offer cheaper robots, but most of them don't have rich experience, rich expertise on the ground, but we do. So we can offer adequate and right solutions for the unexpected variables on the ground. We have our solutions by the name of smart care system to extend prompt and robust doctor update. Based on our experience, around 90% of challenges on the ground can be resolved with software. And we will offer prompt uh, predictive maintenance so that our end client can minimize the, the amount of time robots sit idle. With this way, we can lower the cost of ownership in the long run. And our proprietary software for running the robot can replace the happy 3D LiDAR with like ordinary 2D LiDAR. In this way, we can reduce the, the robot price because the large share of robot price is accounted by the census. In this way, we can also offer robots with reasonable price. And this is the configuration of our proprietary software for robot management and control, uh, which is Solama. Uh, the software can make robots self-right and follow a designated worker or uh, find the recharger automatically. And with this software, you can manage multiple robots at the one place, like setting their routes setting their tasks uh, and giving them priority when it comes to robots stuck in a bottleneck. And you can monitor their routes, their uh, tasks, their status, battery status as well. And you can simulate uh, your, your route 
and you can manage all those data at one place. And this software also provides preventative, sorry, predictive maintenance. And there's a software and solution for automatic pain inspection so that our end client can, can uh, keep like hundreds of robots clean and neat uh, without sweat. And this is our brilliant partner for robot software by the name of Move AI. This is Israeli based company. Uh, basically, their solutions and ours are pretty much the same, but they have more references. And this is our strategic alliance. The first, the top tier has to do with R&D for autonomous mobility solution. As mentioned before, uh, the DreamView, that is our Vision AI partner uh, in Silicon Valley, and Robot AI and Move AI are Israeli based partner for uh, Robot Software. And we are also working with some of the leading research institutes of home and abroad, including Flanders Make of Belgium and Kite and Hanning University. And this is our mid to long term vision. Uh, building of on-man logistics system. Uh, with this, with this system, there will uh, our end client won't need any workers on the ground because they can be replaced with our uh, robot consortium. Our uh, low robot will help worker will ha will help uh, the stock management and carrying of robots and other. Other types of robots will do their job at the mid or top uh, for the mid and top shelf of each rack. This is it. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Much appreciated. Very interesting to find out uh, exactly where you're going into the uh, what industries you're hoping to go into specifically. Uh, fulfillment centers in that area, but also cool to see a little bit of the, um, uh, I believe that was, you said that was your robot in the uh, education, the Children's Science Museum as well? Correct, correct, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to open the floor to Clement to ask any potential questions to you um, and maybe give his opinions on uh, the EU market as well. So Clement, if you're available, can you jump on in? Yeah, sure. Uh, so first, uh, thank you. I think it's pretty interesting to see this kind of robot um, working on the ground and uh, also in different setups, like, for example, the, the museum. Uh, you, you mentioned that your goal is um, basically replacing people. Um, and uh, the thing that I can see here is so you, you mentioned that you are not the cheapest, um, you don't have the cheapest robot. Um, um, but how, how does that work? Like, let's say a company buys this robot. Uh, is it just the price of the robot? Or is there also like some equipment? Because you mentioned that the robot doesn't have like markers on the ground um and stuff like this so is it guided by some other equipment in the factory or how does that work uh, okay uh i brought our boss austin who is founder of this company as well as the ceo uh but i i think i can answer to your question by myself uh we're, uh I said, yes, I said, we don't need any marker because we use a specific solution for autonomous mobility by the name of FLAN. Uh, you can imagine how bats or dolphins move. They use ultrasonic, right? Mm -hmm. And see the world with the reflection of the specific wave. And, okay. uh, and with our robots, our robots see the environment with reflection of laser. That is the LIDAR. And uh, I think you said, uh, what do I think? Uh, what makes our end client buy our product? 
is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be uh, it will be covered. Uh, it I think it was covered at this slide. Uh, I believe our reliability and cost effectiveness mm -hmm. will be enough for clients to make decisions for purchasing our robot. Because the 30 plus years of expertise in logistics ground mm -hmm. uh, gave us enough understanding of the sector and domain. And we can, we can make, uh, we make our robot software and robot, uh, robot software's content with that information, with that knowledge. With that in mind, we can extend a practical, practical robot update and practical um, troubleshooting service to our customers. Okay, so it's uh, it's just working with ultrasonic uh, um, kind of a, a view, um, but how does this? Like, for example, if you wanted to go to the other side of uh, the factory, how does it know uh, where it is in the factory and where to go? What What is the route to go there? Uh, you will make the robot learn where they are. Uh, in the factory? call it mapping, yes. Okay, okay. So you, you, will, uh, you will keep the robot um, explore the environment autonomic, autonomously. Mm -hmm. And by this way, the robot will learn the floor plan. And okay. so, so if a company buys your product, they are just buying the robot itself, no other equi equipment, right? Yes, we don't okay. need any other equipment for the, for the robot. Okay, I think uh, that's all for me. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, are you, for my last question, I guess, um, are you, when you're talking about the European market, you're talking about mostly fulfillment centers. Is that the number one target out there? Yeah. Uh, do you have any countries in particular you were hoping to start with, or is it an overall, um, I'm not entirely sure how delivery services work out in, in Europe, to be honest, but is, it, is there any countries in particular that you're looking at? Uh, let me ask it to our boss. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. No worries, no worries. No worries. Thank you. 그 저희가 유럽에 진출을 할때 가장 우선시하는 시일까요? 어 우리가 유럽에 진출한다고 하면은 어 스마트 팩토리에 관심이 있고 그다음에 아무래도 풀필먼트 센터 쪽에 관심이 있습니다. 예를 들어서 벨지움이라든지. 어, 룩셈부르크 쪽에는 알리바바 유, 유, UK 또는 어, 아마존 UK가 있는데 그런 쪽에 관심이 많습니다. 그럼 국가는 벨기에가 될까요? 벨기에나 그 룩셈부르크가 있지만은 그게 허브, 허브로서 근데 국가를 에, 저희들이 에, 국한하지 않고 어, 유럽 전반적으로 뭐 독일, 에, 프랑, 프랑스, 뭐 영국 이때가 좋겠죠. 아... We don't have any specific priority right at, at this moment, but just, we are just thinking of uh, maybe Belgium, Luxembourg, uh, UK, or Germany, or France. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, that's all the questions I have as well. Um, I appreciate you spending time to share with us a little bit of your company's uh, background, technologies, and information. Thank you. Uh, so great. So that was Hales Robotics. Um, thank you so much for joining us out uh, and talking with us um, with Mr. Jung Lee. Next up, we're going to go to Cox Space and talk to Bini Im or Im Hyunbin, uh, who's going to give us some more information about his company as well as their future plan. So if you would like to join us, that would be great. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, you have a really good pronunciation. Call my name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, because no one can exactly say my name. It's okay. Okay, let me start. Uh, 
if you have a camera that you can use, that'd be great. And if if not, oh, that's okay. Uh, okay too. Oh, there we go. So is that okay to see? All right. Okay, let's start. Uh, control over everything in virtual space, Cox Space. Yeah, Cox Space is a AR, XR, Metaverse solution company and provide hardware and, so, uh, hardware and software. And I'm Vinny from Cox Space. Yeah, here's a problem that we start with. Yeah, today, the current high technology industry structure is very complex and advanced. And there is always a shortage of an expert who deal with such as uh, such advanced equipment. Real time information is very important in an urgent or dangerous situation. And incorrect information can have a critical consequence. And robots are in drone, which are currently used in many fields. We think to require technology that can be precisely controlled and remotely. <clears throat> Yeah. A technical solution is required to solve this problem. Kamar has this advantage of not being able to accurately the major angle in space. Also, we need a more innovative video communication than Zoom. Then we thought we need an easier, more convenient, and more precise control than existing complex VR AR controller. It is almost efficient to get help from AI and experts at the same time. Yeah, here I am introducing uh, Cox Meta Space, which has sol uh, solved all these kind of technical issue we call it CS, yeah, Co Cox Meta Space. Cox Meta Space has a three core functions. Video call is possible based on the air glass, and it can automatically recognize object. And it also allows for the precise control in space. This help even beginner handle complex equipment with easy. Yeah, Cox Meta Space consists of a gesture mouse called Bungie and AI Big Data Analysis Platform. Based on our tech, we provide a first service. First service consists of a CXC for the control, CXA for the analysis. It also provides a PHM for a pro prognostic and has management of like anything circumstances. And CXM is a Cox Meta uh, maker. So, uh, Cox Maker automatically search for the object by modeling and deep learning when you take a picture or a video and upload it to our web. And CXW is an XR video collaboration platform. It can apply it in any AI glass in the market. Uh, further now, okay, I'll, I will show the video. So actually, this one is we apply the uh, whole Microsoft HoloLens to so scan the, the object and shows uh, all the materials and marking as that. Also, it shows the information. Yeah. Yeah, the core technology cost system uh, is a multi remote video collaboration, such as the Zoom. That it's just a very simple idea that Zoom for uh, Metaverse Zoom. So, yeah, okay. And second, object detection technology based on the deep learning. And also the third, the last one is a special precision control that we have. Yeah, we have based on our semiconductor, uh, semiconductor technology, we have a uh, uh, highly, uh, we have a, the technology of a 9 dui facility the positioning. Also, gesture machine, a gesture of machine recorder. Yeah, we have a great differentiation and competitiveness in the market, convenience, uh, in convenience and price scalability, and also function. Here's our business. Oh. Here's our business model. Uh, next year, the uh, bunch of uh, air glass will be coming on, so we will. Uh, we will apply our technology and solution to the AI glasses. So a uh, customer can uh, choose different price model and they can also experience a Cox, Cox Meta space, whatever they want. 
Yeah. And in addition, now on like we are currently uh, the under discussion with the TCL is a company in, uh, from China AI Glass team. The next one is PG strategy. Actually, we started from the B2C market as Bungie. Bungie is a, uh, a wearable device that we applied the 9DO app uh, and 3D positioning with a gesture motion learning recorder. And we launched it. On, uh, launch, we launched it on a several cloud funding platform, like a Kickstarter, Makuak, Indiegogo, what is. Uh, and we got a uh, revenue, revenue at $800,000 last uh, 2000, in 2021. And we also launched now on, uh, we also now on the second project that is called the Banji. Uh, it's kind of, uh, we had uh, some, uh, we have done, uh, we are still going on with the several cloud funding platform. And after the crowdfunding platform, we will the open. Yeah, we will launch it on the open market like Amazon, uh, US, and then UK, and Japan. Also, some several details tour. And in addition, I also uh, last uh, last month I went to uh, Finland and some several uh, countries from Europe, and I went to a retail store and I made a contract with them. So. Uh, uh, like a meal, uh, Ita uh, Italy and Dutchland and uh, uh, in, uh, UK. So Banji will be shown at, at displayed at uh, some retail store in Europe. And also we will also the, uh, launch the, the Cox, uh, Cox Meta Space uh, for that, uh, can, that can possibly to apply uh, uh, with Banji. Yeah, for the uh, B2B business or B2M or B2Z, that we are, you know, we are the contract, uh, we are under discussion with several, uh, several company and organization. And K Military, especially Air Force, are a uh, big customer of our the Cox Meta space. And also, we uh, last week I went to the Helsinki XR Center, the met the director of XR Center, and also. Uh, have some project with uh, the Finnish, the Metaverse company next year. Yeah, here's, here's our yearly growth goal. Yeah, we started from the B2C and then uh, the, and making larger in, a, in a, some several specific uh, the industry. And here's our team, they are expert all their expert expert in their field. Yeah, CEO is from uh, Intel. Uh, he has he has been a long time for the hardware program manager in Intel and MediaTek. Also, uh, last day, uh, currently joined the CEO, who is uh, the vice president of uh, Jesus Kong. He is a uh, XR AI expert uh, in metaverse. Okay, yeah, here's our milestone and. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for bringing us into your uh, work in the metaverse. Uh, really appreciate it. I believe I have some questions before I get started, though. Uh, why uh -huh. don't we go back to Clement and uh, see what he has to uh, ask to say? Yeah, thank you. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, so you are selling um what you are selling is this uh platform and this kind of human interface on the finger right and then yeah, right and then this uh hardware um is actually connecting with some uh glasses some ar glasses right yeah uh, right? And and then yep. and basically you are making money through uh, the platform. Uh, the yeah we, the yeah we have the two the cash flow is that one is from the banji we selling on the market yeah. it is market so customer, and the second one is we have also a uh, customer of the uh, uh, Cox Meta Space the the uh, XI platform. Okay, so how does that like? How does that make money? Like, do you rent space? What What do you do there on on this platform? Oh, you mean the rent space? Okay. So, you mean like a, what kind of a? What you mean like a kind of like a use case of a, the Cox Meta space? You mean right? Yeah. 
yeah what what do you sell on the meta space uh, actually now and we are doing with uh, some kind of a remote collaboration for the uh, hana energy so uh the control tower actually is located in south korea and they uh, they can uh control the all the energy steps uh, from the the other country like especially like, like guam in the united states and uh thailand so okay. basically the control center is located in south korea and they can manage from uh, managed by the Cox Meta space by using mm -hmm. the XR. Yeah. In addition, there is a one that uh, Air Air Force, the, uh, the Republic of Air, Cor uh, Air Force, they 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 apply the Cox Meta space for the, their counter center and also education, the military education, some kind of like equipment hardware. Uh, the, I mean, the not education, the, the military training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. that would be the yeah use case of a yeah Cox Meta space. Great, I have a question. Um, if I can uh -huh. jump in, uh, so in the I want to say in the non-business world, the average person, especially in the United States, um, mm -hmm. you know, has. And I'm saying this as an American, that's my perspective, I suppose. Um, there's uh, a lot of skepticism in the metaverse right now. And a lot of that comes from meta, face, you know, previously known as Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. Are you encountering any of that when you deal with businesses? Do you encounter any of that skepticism? Do you have, is it difficult to kind of bring new businesses into this field? Or do you find, you know, these companies or militaries um, readily accepting this new technology mm -hmm. uh, so i'm encountering some kind of problem like actual metaverse is a kind of now on as much uh, like uh, uh developed it but in a long in, in a long time like a kind of like a the la last year or something like a, if i made a, some some kind of like a customer or like who want to buy it it's a little harder to but now on the uh next year the a, a bunch of AI glasses will be launched so it is a, like a good chance to show the our uh solution because anyone can because the, the the bunch of AI glasses will be, will reduce the price of it so anyone can experience the meta space I and mean, especially the Cox meta space easily with our with our device so that would be the how we deal with the encountering yeah, I was just curious about your perspective. I know yeah. there's a lot of um, a lot of the negativity comes a lot from people who don't know much about the industry. So, mm -hmm. you know, in in um, media, sometimes we see that a lot. But I was just curious because when I'm interviewing people from these companies uh, mm -hmm. and companies that use the metaverse, there seems to be a lot of optimism. But the average mm -hmm. person hasn't quite bought into it yet. So I didn't know how that translates into sales. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just curious, so thank you for answering my question. I also think additionally, like, we are because uh, we are doing the B two C business for the Bungie because the Bungie is uh, uh, will be the, the crucial I and mean, main uh, core, a uh, main uh, device for the metaverse because it's very small and it is like, cheaper, and then anyone can use mm -hmm. it and it can you know, apply to the metaverse. So we believe that uh, Bungie will secure the users. Yeah, well, can I ask? I, I think I must have missed it. Um or maybe I missed it in the presentation. What was the um, uh, asking price now? Or what's, what's uh, your, I guess, suggested retail price? Uh, retail price, the end, of, end of price will be 129, but we will uh, just, yeah, yeah. Okay, like okay. Uh, the price is same like an Apple Pencil, but have, have mm -hmm. more function than Apple Pencil. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I look forward to getting my first for VR's headset device in the future. Yeah, in the future, you can, you can apply it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, if that's it, if there are no more questions, um, I want to say thank you for coming out and uh, giving us a little bit of uh, not only just to look into the field, of course, but of course, to look into what mm -hmm. your company does and produces and offers mm -hmm. um, as far as the metaverse as well as physical products. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thank you. That was yeah. Vinny M, thank you. Yeah.
so next up, we are going to move on to our third corporation after uh, before taking a quick break. So we can make sure we can all take care of any uh, bathroom needs we need in a second. But before we do that, I do want to bring in our last of the first trio of corporations. Uh, we have Sam Corporation coming in. Uh, and we have Jabon Park, who is the CEO of Sem Corporation. Sem, is I believe the pronunciation in Korea. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and invite him in? Uh, our story creator is very, um, platform is very important. Every user's YouTube video watching the platform daily, uh, 10, 20 minutes every, I'm a ever more and TikTok as we issued is one billion users. Uh, we can video content creating is very complex and costly. Our platform is very simple and easy and trust. And content platform is very simple product, like a story world program and collaborating and video editing is mixed our platform is one-stop solution our story creator is image and text to make uh, automatically video rendering uh, our story Every content is based on story. Story is a very important content issue. We are, our pro is very simple and used ad tech in world other is con student. The story sharing and make a scene editing and um, include in, the music and automatically uh, editing and rendering. In the output is uh, storyboard, wordbook, ebook, video, rendering output. We are to perform is, is uh, competition is the storyboard that and Canva and Lumen 5. Storyboard is always storyboard editing. Canva is a video collaboration and editing design. Lumen 5 only video editing. Story creator in the story and making video and with a AI technology. Our business model is B2B with our director and product pro production and other animation production. Uh, we are B2G model is school. And Finland Helsinki. Is this, by the way, is this, um, can you still hear me, uh, j -Bomb? Mr. Park? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you see this video on my on the screen right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the video, uh, I can share it while you keep talking. Is this one yes. of the videos? Yes. Can, okay, you can keep going. I, I can play this and have it go in the background if you'd like. Yeah. Uh, our platform is every creators is collaboration and making content and story story is very simple character background item another issue is collaborated our platform our library is 10 hundred thousand is another content is used every free contents. J 
this is background images. This video is character. Every every character is always other creators on node and uh, benefit another issue. And the select and editing scene, go to scene and text scenario and another item, bubble, speech bubble, every content is separate library and editing design and another beauty, huge. And I recording my voice and AI voice. And automatically editing, video editing, output. And storytelling, storyboard, another format. Very easy video editing tools. Okay, thank you. <laughs> this seems very, uh, very child friendly. What is the age group that um, you're looking at here? What ages can make these stories from, I don't know, what grade level? Elementary, middle school? Yes, first level is elementary school. We are next to technology version is professional version. Mm, okay, cool. Your POC is uh, USA and Finland. We are first edtech solution. Our every France, um, Finland and USA, we collaborate our company. We are, we are five person is come to other, we are uh, technology expertise members. We are patent issue, very large, already continue the patent is registered. Our located education, Silicon Valley in the same corporation. Our partner is the Europe partners, particular Maria Gungir, France Crate Valley, Helsinki. Uh, we are already another country is uh, collaborating in a partnership in the our platform and product distributor, fine, fine distributor. Thank you. Sorry, I, I our co-founder is Another Europe pre conference. Next time, yeah, <laughs> it very well English. My co-founder <laughs> is no problem at all. Thank we appreciate you. it, and I understand everything that you're saying, and um, the the slides and video help too. So I think we're all on the same page. Um, if there were any confusing parts, of course, Clement, you're free to ask. Um, I will have a question or two afterwards, but uh, we are not looking for the American perspective. We are definitely looking for the EU perspective today. So Clement, if you could jump on in, uh, that would be great. Sure. Uh, so I think it's pretty interesting for for education, which is the the main uh, like the main target. Um, what what kind of videos did you see the children do on this kind of uh, on your app? Uh, do you see like some really um, elaborate content or they generally they tend to do a small video and then uh, do another small video um, without going too much into details? What kind of content do you see there? Uh, story is, content is based on story. Story is very important. And planning, strategy, pedagogy, everything is based on uh, studying stu students, very 
um, planning every collaborate in creativity and imagination. Uh, we are training young child, planning, simulating, and every is brain using the brain. We are young child very hardly in the rebel. So every every work is based on planning. Mm -hmm. Right. My understanding, I've interviewed the company before too, is it's uh, the story uh, itself isn't the main focus at all. Like they don't have pre, the focus isn't preset stories that they can fill in. Um, it's more like teaching the children how to build a story. And it, and it can be anything from, I don't know, my first adventure in space to a fairy tale. Um, but the types of stories, to answer your first question, very much freestyle at the imagination of the seven year old to 10 year old. So, up to the, and it would be up to the teacher if there's a teacher involved, what kind of stories they would make. Um, but because they can add pictures, uh, they can add their own pictures, their own settings, uh, their own dialogues. It's really an open canvas as opposed to the types of stories um, that are pre set, from my understanding. And, and uh, they can also include uh, themselves, right? Like, for example, taking a selfie or something like this, right? Yes, I am um, based on fine artist. You, sorry? Hey. <laughs> so the, uh, can, uh, can the students, the학생들이, students are on the day, could, Selfie chick go, chuggy, sajid, or listen now. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Every, every upload my content. Okay, so everything is every, creators. Yeah. yeah. And um, collaborated in the team, team builder. Okay. Pretty interesting. Do you have, um, do you have a way to earn money? Uh, like, is, for example, was is there a way to use other people's contents, other people's pictures, other people's backgrounds, um, it, to create a story? Like, do you have some kind of community where you can buy and sell backgrounds or characters? Yes, yes. Another creator is contents. Another creator is benefit mm -hmm. and trending. P. Transaction you know, so yeah, there's a there's a way to uh, have a marketplace on it then. Yeah, content market. Uh, before we go, I have one more question, Clement. Feel free to ask more if you'd like. Um, you have worked with, have you worked with schools in Europe? Yeah. Can uh, can you tell us about that? Uh, Europe Europe school is based on phenomenon based learning, or maybe an plan. Example and plan is very analog education plus and digital education is a collaborated uh, class. Our Product is offline product, online platform is mixed. Very important is analog experience and online collaborate. European school is very important pedagogy. Look, Finland is a collaboration captain go in now. 아, 지금 헬싱키 시 보통 유럽은 시에서 이제 어, 교육청 같이 이제 운영을 하는데 헬싱키 시에서 이제 POC 하고 이제 학교들하고 지금 프로그램 해가지고 이제 도입하는 것들을 이제 구체적으로 얘기하고 있습니다. Okay, so working together with a, a, a educational institute in Helsinki, so you have real world experience out there. Uh, okay, that's all the questions I have. Um, Clement, anything else from you? Yeah, for me too. 
no more okay. questions. Great. Thank you so much uh, for telling us all about SEM Corporation. We really appreciate it, uh, Mr. J. Bon Park. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this 2022 Pangyo Monthly Online Meetup, uh, Season 2, and visit three more companies and get some more insights and tips from Clement uh, as he gives us some information about the European market, as well as, as uh, he'll ask some questions. Uh, for some of the participants here as well. With that being said, without further ado, I would like to bring in Blue Feel. Hugh is going to be representing Blue Feel. Tell us a little bit about what Blue Feel is and any relation they have to the European markets and what they're looking for. So, Hugh, welcome aboard. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen and introduce my company with the pages I prepared. Uh, Uh, can you guys see this? Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I wish uh, I wish I had sense presentation pages like other attendees here. I'm sorry, but for some reason, uh, the file I prepared doesn't work on my laptop now. So I will be introducing my companies through these pages. Mm. We are Bluefield and uh, we are an um, appliance startup, uh, startup specializing in small home of electronics. We began our journey in 2017 when we spun up from Samsung Electronics. Uh, before spinning up, we used to be Samsung Electronics uh, R&D engineers. And as an in-house venture team of Samsung, we were recognized for our product design and technology. Uh, as we spun up, we successfully attracted their investment, I mean, from Samsung in 2018. Since our beginning, we have introduced two to three new products each year. And this year, we, we received the CES Innovation Award and IF Design Award for our air quality monitor and humidifier. So, um, our main mission is to provide solutions to inconveniences people have unconsciously become used to when using uh, home, op home appliance products. Uh, we often witness inconveniences caused by products that are uh, often taken for granted because people just think it is the way it is. The inconveniences may come from a product's careless user interface or the product itself. We uh, we research and develop our products based on user experience data to solve these unquestioned, unquestioned inconveniences. From design to manufacturing processes, uh, the first priority we, uh, our engineers and our designers, to find and solve bad user experiences existing among similar products. Uh, we've been growing year by year in the small appliance industry in Korea and hope people all over the world can meet us soon. And these, uh, these are our products. Uh, we started, we started uh, our fan technologies. Uh, so we, Actually, 2017 and 18, we introduced more than four fan products. Here they are. And what's special about our products uh, is, uh, in terms of technology, we have an um, advanced motor technology. Our first product was Minihead Fan Pro, uh, that is on the screen. Uh, it is the handheld fan with ultra lightweight and long battery life. Uh, the size is also super compact. All of these were uh, possible because we applied a drone motor technology to this fan to minimize, uh, maximize wind speed and battery life and to minimize weight and size. Uh, we made and tuned the motor with our technology and after this fan, the first product we made, we applied this technology to other fan products 
uh, on the screen. Uh, we made from table fan, neck fan to camping fan. So uh, when it comes to our design, our mission, as our mission shows, our, uh, our main focus is to solve inconveniences most, peop uh, most people and most products in the market often ignore. As hardware products are uh, easily judged by their external design, our design team's main focus is to solve main solve um, inconveniences caused by design factors among hardware products. Mm. And the uh, and the reason why we decided to make small appliances is because. Uh, as our living spaces in Asia are getting smaller and smaller, and one person household is becoming irresistible, uh, irresistible demographic trend, we realize that people need small appliances for only one person, not big appliances. Uh, today, this trend is not only found in Asia, but also in Europe and even in the United States. Therefore, uh, we saw some opportunities and found our motivation to create something useful for one person household. Um, and uh, they, uh, actually we've been, uh, still we've been ra uh, raising more than 5 million US dollars on global crowdfunding platforms. And even today we, uh, we have launched a new crowd uh, funding campaign on Kickstarter. So um, please see, uh, please uh, have, take a look at the products on online and if, and if there's any anything you find inter uh, interesting and useful for you, please buy and try. Uh, our technology and design will provide some uh unexperienced solution uh yeah i think this is pretty much all i can say for the presentation thank you so much um some mm -hmm. really cool products in there um <laughs> yeah so i i'm gonna ask you about a few of them actually oh you stopped on the one i was interested in right there <laughs> okay uh being at that i live uh, as a single what do you call it a single person dwelling myself mm -hmm. um i found it pretty interesting to kind of see your approach in innovation uh, but mm -hmm. also seeing products that i could benefit from uh is that a chart is that a charging station that's part of that vacuum ah yeah oh uh, well this vacuum has a wireless charging station that is in uh, that is included in the package and the reason why we made this vacuum is oh uh, because of the our living spaces getting smaller and smaller. And it's uh, actually, it raised five million, uh, not five, this one is two million US dollars on Kickstarter wow. and Indiegogo. And now it's one of our best selling items in the United States and in Japan as well. Uh, what's special about this product is we tune the motor. So the the weight is just five or uh, 500 grams, but the suction power is more than 17 pascals. Uh, pascals wow. suction powers. Yeah, it's uh, actually the product is right next to me. I brought here. Uh, if <laughs> it is okay, I can show you <laughs> right now. Sure. Uh, uh, okay, then I will stop the share the screen and uh, like this. This is wireless charging station, and this is the vacuum cleaner. Oh, can you see this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me show you the power first. It's 17,000 Pascal suction power. Did you guys see that? that it doesn't fit. <laughs> it's after in my hand. Oh, it's and after using it, you can just drop on the onto the charging station for easy charge. 
Uh, the, the reason why we made this is uh, as our living spaces are getting smaller and smaller, people have no space to hide their, uh, their cleaning tools behind their closets. So our intention is to help, uh, help people put this back right next to their desk or bed. And if there's something or uh, some mess in their site, and just clean that and after using after using it, just drop in on the charging station. That is that is our intention. <laughs> okay, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna stop right now because I'm gonna ask you a few more questions later. Uh, mm -hmm. Clement, um, if there's anything you'd like to bring up, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I think um, I can see that um, working pretty well in Asia where uh, people don't really have their own um, houses like in US or, or Europe. Mm -hmm. um, I can also see, uh, I can also uh, see that for people having apartments uh, in Europe. Um, but how do you compete with, um, for example, Xiaomi in China? Uh, mm. and mini so um all these kind of uh, companies who are also doing um small fans small uh, products like this mm. uh, actually <laughs> because we are a small startup uh, to come uh, competing with competing with big companies like Xiaomi um, Dyson or you know, some other competitor, or big competitors, it's really difficult. But uh, what I can say uh, confidently is the our motto is really powerful compared. Uh, actually, in the same class, it is the top uh, top suction power. Uh, mm -hmm. even Dyson doesn't can. Uh, actually, they don't have small vacuums. But if their size is, uh, mm -hmm. if their size were smaller or uh, small like us, then. Uh, our suction power will definitely uh, beat them. As uh, also our uh, our choice, or uh, actually our, our selection of materials uh, for each product is really uh, really really strict uh, to minimize or uh, to minimize and lower the weight and to maximize user uh, experience with uh, through. My buttons and other touch uh, touch filling. So, mm -hmm. oh, I think that is, uh, that is our biggest, uh, the biggest selling points. And also, to compete with, uh, big competitors, we actually we are really working hard to build some build strong strategies for online marketplaces such as Amazon and other uh, other big marketplaces in Europe. Uh, so I think we will experience three years and errors, but we oh, eventually we are gonna make it after, after some time. So what's the current price, for example, for this uh, vacuum cleaner? Uh, this vacuum cleaner, this vacuum, uh, the end customer price is 170. Actually, it is really high compared to other small vacuums. Uh, but the reason the reason the price is high is because we design and we sell like all the materials and we make the motor ourselves. Uh, that is the reason why the price is kind of high. And and also the current economic situation, the strong US dollar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, so I have another question. Mm -hmm. How many of these products do you have in your home right now? How many of your uh, products? Four. Actually, I have this vacuum and also also this fan, this this camping fan, and and mini head fan pro. Also, we have humidifier here. I use this in my car. Hmm. I like the um, the fan was also a kind of a really cool one, the little mini fan, just because it was smart. I mean, I like, especially as a guy, I don't mm -hmm. have a 
purse to carry my a fan in. Um, so the less I can carry around, the the better. So I thought that was uh, a really smart smart idea. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, actually, most uh, most handheld fans are uh, last less than uh two or uh, fifteen hours, but ours last up to twenty four hours. It is a truly uh is a true uh cordless and portable handheld fan you can use. Great. Um, well, um, I, I don't think I have any more questions. I may have to go on your website to see what else you're selling. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, I appreciate also your uh, enthusiasm, your conviction, and your belief in your own products. And I think that really comes off well. So um, uh -huh. I can see that you're a good salesperson as well. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, uh, is there anything else anyone else wants to chime in or is there anything else you'd like to say before we go? Um, uh, web, do you have a website? Is it just bluefield.com or where do we find uh, you? Oh, I'm going to bluefield. Oh, you can, you can just type on the searching bar, Google, uh, bluefield, then you can find this. Great. Thank you so much. I always like talking to someone who, uh, has a consumer product that I can immediately use. So appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so next up, we are going to go to our fifth company, Laplace. Had the pronunciation right. This is named after a scientist, which I, I didn't know as a science major. That's kind of embarrassing, but we're going to go with that. And uh, we're going to talk to Noel, Noel who's going to be uh, giving us some more information about Laplace Technologies. So if you can join us, we'd really appreciate it. We may be so far ahead of schedule that she may not be here at the moment. So we'll find out in just a second. Give us one minute here. We are about about we're about twenty five minutes ahead of schedule, so there's a chance that okay. And then after this, we will do uh, newbie lab around 25 minutes from now. So maybe around five o'clock. So let's go ahead and go to Laplace Technologies and talk to Noul about what is Laplace Technologies and maybe learn about the scientists behind the name as well. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for introducing our service. So yeah, good afternoon, everyone. This is Earl from Laplace, the series of Laplace. Uh, okay. Can everyone see this well? Great. Um, we are an AI growth hacking and consulting solution for e-commerce sellers, and we are aiming to become the very first uh, solution, very first start of every core decisions that e-commerce sellers face when they are running business. The problem we are trying to solve is that the 90% of SMBs fail within the year they are established. This is now um, telling us that data-driven smart decision-making is now a matter of survival for them to actually survive. And considering that the market is still growing very fast, it is also the key to a bigger opportunity, capture a bigger opportunity. But the problem is that the smart and good decision-making based on data-driven is expensive and laborious, time-consuming, and difficult, meaning that good strategies and actions are not well-known to the public. Going deep dive into the problems, it costs minimum of $200,000 per annum for a business to run a growth hacking team which is really not affordable for SMBs. So the SMBs typically rely on their gut feelings and typically result in bad, bad output. And even if you have a growth hacking team, they have to take more than four hours every day manually managing dozens of the data set because 
they do not only run a single shopping mall, single like sales channel. For example, if you even if you have a shopping mall, your own marketplace built in Shopify, you also have to sell your products in Amazon, neighbor store, coupon, and every every um sales channels. Mm -hmm. Typically in Korea, they have more than five sales channels, and if you add on more ads channels, ops channels, then will then the number of channels will increase fast. And the uh, most important problem is that even if you have the KPIs and all analyzed and visualized graphed, you don't know how to interpret the problems. So even the food commerce with more than annual revenue of $14 million and fashion commerce with cumulative transactions more than $700 million ask us for a consultation how to interpret the KPIs and diagnosis and tell us what to do to improve those performances. So Laplace solve all these problems. We support and offer the best decisions. Our pricing starts from $0, uh, enabling, enabling the SMBs also be able to access to our solution. And automated AI automated growth hacking tool engine, automated data integration analysis will take you on single click, single logging in to interpret and um, integrate your data. And the best part is that all, we also offers you the best strategies proven to be efficient by the industry leaders. And we, on, we also quantify the performance of each strategies. In one word, we replace data-driven decision-making processes and we offer you even better solution than um, your growth hacking team. We offer you headless integration, analysis, diagnosis, and recommendation of the strategy. Getting deep into the solution, first of all, as you can see here in the screenshot of our solution, you can connect more than 30 um, connect like sales channels and ads, say, uh, ads channels by a single logging in, saving you up to four hours every day. Um, and yeah, much easier uh, and much easier for you to access, access to your business 360 degrees. And we also diagnose your problem by recommending the KPIs and recommending where to start to focus on. For example, we offer you the scoring card um, managed by our AI that includes the result, um, results that analyze your trends in comparison with your previous periods and so on. So if you get lower points here, you should think, think that this is the area you should focus on. For example, the average order value, we have the lowest number here. So this is the where area you have to focus on. The best part of this KPIs are that we also offer you benchmarks with your peer group. If you're looking into, um, we, if you are focusing on selling like teenage girls bags, then we offer you the benchmarks on AOV ARPPU and revenues and all other different KPIs in very detailed um, level, we offer you peer benchmark. And we only do not show you this in our solution. We, only, uh, we also give you the alert and detection of each KPIs daily by Slack or Kakao Talk so that you don't have to report your boss every day, making up all, the, all different presentations or Excel file. With our solution, there was one um, customer selling pet products, increase their margin. So this is the work, uh, process, like kind of process we are going through with our AI. We detected that the company is experiencing decrease in contribution margin, uh, continuous decreasing. And we've, we've seen this is lower than average in their peer group. So we recommended to focus on products that has higher margins and hard to sell them with a, as a bundle with higher margin products and clear the inventory for the products with lower margin. Not only this case shows that we are useful, but we are validating the demands with rapidly expanding customer base and customer success stories. 
There are a company that has decreased their ads cost by 20%. And there's a company who increased the margin by 10 percent point. And there is a company that grew their revenue by twice times bigger in just three months. And the most interesting and like astonishing achievement here is we have collaborated with the brand aggregator who aggregate and eliminate their brands and accelerate their revenue. Um, because we could help them find the potential customer repurchase rate and every core and indices that can guarantee the performance of a brand, they could have achieved 10 times growth in just a single year, no, six months. And as far as I know, they have now grew 20 times bigger than they were used to be before Laplace. As a result, we have grew like weekly 20% and reached more than 800 friends using our service. And they have, the customer revenue have reached more than $630 million per year. And we have more than 350 brands, I mean, not brands, companies working closely together with us. And the most best, like interesting part is that we have more data than a shopping mall or a marketplace with users, um, 8.5 million users. This is kind of similar to neighbor shopping mall, the biggest marketplace in Korea. Not just the data size that we have as a competitive, um, competitive edge, but our data integration analysis engine is best among the competitors. We have the most um, channels, we have the most engines to show most like largest number of analysis. And we have unique value proposition that we are offering the strategies and um, performance of each strategies. And our um, expansion ability to expand is much higher than the other solutions offering CRM or ads apps or even a data analytics apps because we have the purchase data, products data, customer data, the data that can show you business 360 degrees. And this is uh, viral, uh, this kind of achievement is getting viral by the community that, that we are running. More than 150 current members are closely working together to develop our service. And our content marketing is working really well that we have successfully reached more than 100 participants running a seminar. And we have unloaded the um, customer success story interviews in YouTube. And more than 10 articles are posted in a month, every month. We are not just um, aiming to become a data analytics tool for e-commerce. We are going to be the starting point of course analysis. Uh, we will connect and plug in all the um, ops prop uh, ops solutions and we will become the brain where to focus on so we will start offering where uh, like um, strategies where to focus on and these solutions will be starting from Laplace and eventually will become the B2B SaaS aggregators and our team with a bunch of uh, <laughs> developers with excellent uh, skills and excellent experiences. And me from McKinsey Company who has excellence in consulting and diagnosing business problems will offer you the best options and best solutions than other competitors. Thank you. Um, this is the end of our, um, our presentation and thank you for sharing your time today. Please let me know if you have any questions. Great. Thank you so much uh, for uh, sharing that information. Uh, I will have a few questions for you and uh, I'm going to let Clement start it and then I'll finish it off with a couple of my own. So Clement, if you're ready, go for it. Thank you. Um, so I think that's that's really interesting that you have a lot of integrations, mm -hmm. um, the peer benchmark and uh, the, the strategies. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned, this requires a lot of uh, data. Mm -hmm. um, 
I'm just uh, thinking like, do you plan to go to Europe? Uh, like, because uh, as you may know, like data is kind of um, um, a subject that is a little bit, uh, how to say? Sure. Um, like, we, we uh, like in a short term, we don't have a plan to go to Europe, but rather we, are, we have plan to go to US market especially the West Coast side. But this was this is kind of global. Uh, we already have some customers that has brands are like working global and have some sales channels in Europe and US. Mm -hmm. We can offer you um, the same solution if you're in Europe, whether if you're in Europe or US. But my, my yeah. <laughs> we're now focusing on u.s market okay yeah because my point is uh, that in europe there is more about uh, data compliance oh ah, yeah sure Involved. um about the personal data right yeah, yeah um that one we have already have talked with the legal agencies that this was um not a problem in a legal restriction okay in u.s and korea but we have to still work on the Europe. But because we are um, using the anonymous data, not a not a data with the identification, mm -hmm. I think this kind of statistical um, data set could be also leveraged in Europe. Okay. So your ta your target market is mainly US and Korea for now, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I had a question based on something you said earlier um, mm -hmm. related to the zero dollar starting point. Mm -hmm. um, I, I presume that's just an entry point to bring people in. Um, but what was it? What exactly do you? OK, talk to me like I'm stupid because I am about this information. What, is, what exactly happens at the zero dollar pricing range? And then what is the next step for a company? Um, after they once they realize they need more so we have a pricing segment by the they are the customer revenue segment so if you are earning lower than one million dollars per year we offer you every court this um analysis free but if you are okay. bigger than one million dollars of revenue then we can offer uh, we can charge you like the pricing mm -hmm. connected so, to your revenue. Yeah. So then my next question would be, um, a lot of my background comes in uh, social media as a creator, not less on the business side, more on the creator side. Um, now, is this mostly, can individual creators who have a business on the side, how small of a company is able to like take advantage of this is my question, I suppose. People that have their own, you know, uh, merchandising or online courses, um, like what exactly, what's that smallest company that you do work with? Or uh, that we, is able to take mm -hmm. advantage of it, I should say. We have a one person business. Like, yeah, we have like our customer, there is more than 100 customers using our service with just one person. Like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> so individual creator using just one sales channel or two sales channel can also get the advantage with our service because like um even they are small they also they they need the basic indices to track their business performances mm -hmm. but because yeah. they are small they don't have the resources even to like act, use the excel they don't have the time so they can leverage our service just to click and log in and get the core indices like revenue per profit and their customers and repurchase rate and so on. And is it as part of your um their business strategy? Um I, I uh you said a million dollars in revenue or something like that. Yeah. Can you million. if you're under a million, can you get mm -hmm. access to everything you need? Or can you kind of, even though you're under a million, you can still um 
is there another subscription plan for someone who doesn't make a million dollars but wants more i don't know what the word data i guess more consulting i don't know what else could mm. be done for someone who's new company but wants more from you oh so um typically smaller business have smaller transaction size but mm -hmm. if your transaction size is bigger than what we expected from companies below 1 million we charge you some but it's not that big so our okay. typical strategy is to focus on the revenue side so that show that we can actually help you increase the revenue the strategy is that go on lock into our service we can help you accelerate your revenue and then we can share your revenue and profits afterwards. That's where our strategy. Cool. It's interesting. I, I don't have a company now, but it's <laughs> something I, I want to keep in the back of my mind for the future, for future reference. That would be great <laughs> because <laughs> I, I am from, I have backgrounds on consulting firm. I understand how people want the consulting and want to like get a core indices on in a single click and see what's going on but in korea and even us they yeah it's above your imagination they they don't really track down their revenue they don't really track down even profits so hmm. this could be the solution for their problems there cool well i will certainly i mean i have a couple of friends who are in sub $1 million sales companies that oh. I will uh, drop your name to. So I appreciate your uh, sharing this information. Yeah, that is great. Um, thank <laughs> you, actually, <laughs> our potential customers. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, really appreciate it. Is there anything else you'd like to say before uh, we wrap this up or comment if you have anything else? No, um, I'm good with everything. and. Again, thank you for listening to our presentation today. Great. Well, thank you so much. That was a Noel from Laplace Technologies. Uh, and uh, yeah, a little bit into the um, business strategy consulting side of things. Uh, for any companies out there, if you are watching this YouTube, um, if you're watching this on YouTube again, you know where to go to. All right, so we're gonna end with our final company here. We're gonna to go to NubiLab or Nuvi Lab uh, and talk to Kim Hee-jung, who is gonna give us some more information about Nuvi Lab as we find out what their key products and services are. So why don't we go ahead and invite um, Hee-jung onto the main stage. Okay, oh. um, hello everyone. Uh, can, you see, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, yours. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Kelly Kim. Uh, CM of Nuvi Lab, thanks for giving me the opportunity to introduce our solution and our company. We help cafeteria managers and ESG managers reach their zero waste goals and provide a satisfying meal. As the built in 2018, we received the CES 2021 Innovation Awards in Healthcare and Sustainability and many other awards in various competitions. And we recently achieved the AMU million US dollars investment, which is a series A. Food waste is one of the main culprits of global warming, which account about 9% of all carbon emissions. And food price is soaring every year for rise in food and material cost. In addition, strong regulations put the pressure on companies to reduce food waste. So they are struggling to streamline operation cost and minimize the food waste, but it is very hard to do it. Our scanner automatically analyzes the type and the amount of food served, as well as eaten or left by users, so that cafeteria managers can figure out the user's preference on each menu. Because it also records the type and the amount of overprepped food, it helps to optimize quantity of food material when they ordering them. Eventually, it helps to reduce food waste and food, food material cost. We use stand scanner or auto scanner in terms of how users move in cafeteria, canteens, or restaurants. Mobile scanner is used targeting B2C. 
We provide the most efficient way to optimize cafeteria operations through using insightful data collected through our AI food scanner. We innovate the way of kitchen operation system which currently heavily rely on managers' own experience, which may bring inaccuracies. Overfrapped food are generated from lack of information of consumption prediction. With our analyzed data, we can suggest how much they should prepare by predicting future consumption, and they will be able to reduce food material cost up to 30%. Plate waste is generated because they cannot identify users' preferences on each menu. As we provide the analyzed plate waste data, they can use it when designing the menu or adjusting the recipes. And they can reduce plate waste up to 42%. And because our dashboard displays the reduced amount of greenhouse gas in real time whenever it detects zero waste plate, users can figure out how much they contribute to reduce carbon emission. So it leads them to leave less leftover and eventually it helps reduce plate waste. Based on our technology, we are developing integrated management solution for carbon emission in cafeteria. It measures the, the amount of carbon emission generated from cafeteria operation considering all carbon emission factors like food waste, food material ingredients, operation systems, etc., and create a report on dashboard to support the carbon neutral operation management in cafeteria. Through analyzing the amount and the kinds of food consumed during a meal, we provide users with their personal intake nutritional information if the users scan their plate before and after eating, after they are personally paired to our technology. We are developing personal eating habit management app targeting B2C, which provides all, all intake nutritional information if the user takes the picture of before and after the meals. A lot of companies in healthcare fields and food service companies are showing their interest on this app these days, because analyzing eating habit has been unsolved problems in digital healthcare business. And, and I bet this app will play a very important role in healthcare sector. Through operating a new VRF solution, we predict our clients can save 62,500 US dollars per year if the number of daily users are 1,000 and production cost per meal is five US dollars. However, the fee for our program costs 20,000 US dollars per year. Eventually, uh, they will be able to save uh, 45,500 US dollars per year. We are exploring to make a partnership with global, global and local food service companies. Recently, a vice presidents from our mark one of the biggest um, global catering, catering companies in the world has visited our company and they suggested us business co-work in the near future. Besides them, we have a connection with other global uh, catering companies. And we participate in, in global fairs, exhibitions and accelerating programs held by global companies to increase awareness of our solutions. In addition, we run various digital channels like YouTube, Instagram, blogs, et cetera, to communicate with our potential clients uh, constantly. Our scanner does not need a scale to measure the weight of food waste, unlike other competitors. Mere scanning can detect both amount and type of food waste, so it needs less space and it is easy to learn. Our solution is being operated over 70 locations in B2B, B2Z segments in Korea. We work with administration of national defense, schools, government offices, and other big corporates in Korea. Also, 
we introduced our programs to Microsoft, Nestle, and many other uh, global food, food service companies, as I mentioned. We were already invested a million US dollars by um, Korea's top IT companies, and it is going to be used in, in improving AI models for better analysis accuracy and automatic learning of, of new menus. Now our, we are looking for investment around 25 million US dollars next year to scale up our business. The core technology of NoviLab is 90% consistent with autonomous driving technology. The founder of NoviLab, a former automobile researcher, is developing this amazing technology with global professionals in NoviLab. Thank you. Great. Um, been writing down questions for you. This is uh, really interesting to me, but. Uh, Appreciate you joining in and uh, or joining in this uh, live stream and giving us this information. Thank I was you. really curious too, especially when uh, you got into the personal uh, management side of it. But again, before I steal all the questions, uh, Clement can join in first and then I'll jump in with my own questions after that. Okay. Um, so what was interesting to me is um, uh, the like you can see your personal uh, CO2 uh, rate on your right. Um, is there some kind of like gamification on that? Like, do you do you have some kind of ranking with your friends or this kind of stuff uh, that might be interesting to um, not really compete but um, see how you're doing with uh, compared to the others? Right, right. Um, good question. Um, we uh, uh, we operated our solution uh, in SK Telecom Canteen in Korea, and they were really satisfied uh, with with the outcome of our solution. So they wanted to spread our solution to other locations in Korea, like Daejeon, Pangyo, or, I mean, uh, other five. Five, uh, other four locations, which means we operated our solution in five locations in Korea, and we showed the dashboard. Actually, we showed the dash dashboard the, um, the in real time um, um, uh, place zero uh, place zero waste percentage, like a ranking. So um, it was very interesting uh, project, and um, the every I mean the the, the workers. Who use the uh, their uh, cafeteria in every locations can see how um, their 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 ranking comparing with other other locations, and it was very interesting um, uh, project. And also, uh, we are um, for the schools. We can uh, make a compete with um, other you know every single schools that operates our solution that they can see um, which school is the best in reducing you know, uh, carbon emission, something like that. Okay. And um, is there um, a more convenient way to scan your plates? So I, I, I saw that you show like a camera scanning your, your plate. Right. Mm -hmm. um, how does that work? Like, is it, uh, for example, at the entrance of the cafeteria, at the exit of the cafeteria? Um, how does that work like? Uh, right. Uh, we can decide what, what kind of what kind of scanners we can use uh, in terms of um, how um, the cafeteria is operated. So, for example, in the return zone, if they have a uh, conveyor belt, um, the the easiest uh, the, the, what we do is we deploy our scanner on top of the on top of the um, the conveyor belt, so that. Um, if the users uh, return their their place on the on the conveyor belt, and mm -hmm. conveyor when the conveyor belt moves, uh, our scan automatically catch the, uh, the 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 plate and analyze all the uh, leftovers. So that means that um, that users don't have to you change their you know be movement I mean behavior when they use when they return their plates. And mm -hmm. also sometimes um, if they don't have any you know, um, the, the kind of conveyor belt. We, we research um, the user's movement uh, in the return zone and that we 
uh, we deploy their auto scanner on the spot that catch the plate uh, without um, any inconvenience. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, great, I have a, just quick questions here because um, a lot of the questions about opportunities and strategy you've already mentioned and, and we're very clear about. So I don't have questions about that, um, but just a few. So what I'm, what I'm saying is uh, these questions might be a little more critical, but I'm okay. saying that in light of the fact that the rest of them are really interesting or like it, it seems like it's really good opportunity. Mm -hmm. But my first question is, how do you distinguish or do you have the technology to distinguish between something like bulgogi and soy based or tofu plant based bulgogi? Do you have that kind of technology or how does that because, you know, you can buy soy based food that looks like the real thing. Is there a way right. to figure that out? Right. Right, right. Um, uh, we have uh, over three millions of um, food uh, food database now, so uh, wow. we can yeah, so we can distinguish. Um, I mean, discriminate um, that kind of uh, the food, of course, the type of the food, of course, and um, for example, uh, like uh, let's say uh, the menu is ujigo doppa, and um, you know sometimes it is. I mean, when they in the return zone, sometimes they separate sauce and rice, but sometimes they mix. Mm. But we can uh, we can uh, identify it is ojigo doppa, whether it, it is it is separated or not. Uh, so uh, that's why you can uh, discriminate uh, all these kind of uh, food uh, food kinds. I was curious about that because I was thinking too. I, I just had food in the cafeteria for lunch today and. You know, when I put the food away, you put all the food into one soup bowl and send it back mm -hmm. in Korean restaurant or Korean. Right. right. Yeah. Do, so you, like, do you tell them like the company that you worked with, um, would you say it was S was it SK you said? SK Telecom. Yeah. Like, do you tell them don't sep don't put all your food into one bowl or is there a way to get around that? Yes. Yes. We, we, we advise them to uh, not mixed um mm. at the return when they return their plates uh that's very important yeah that's very important to analyze all the all the menus right um okay. and also um to um to increase the accuracy of uh, our analysis uh actually we received the menu in advance from the nutritionist mm. uh, so that makes more accurate um for analyzing uh, all the, the the menus cool um, so yeah, I, sorry. I mean, those seem to be a little critical. My other comments are just that it sounds like a really cool way to have educational opportunities in schools for children to learn. Right. I mean, right. I, I see a lot of potential. So um, mm -hmm. again, uh, really interesting product that you have here mm -hmm. uh, and applications for the future. So I hope that the rest of your um, series investments go very well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I, now I'm in Singapore uh, to participate in the Switch program. And this morning, I'm, I, I had a meeting with um, Alexandra Hospital, and they wanted to um, analyze the intake nutritional facts of uh, the patient. So uh, we, I, I made a deal with them and for the POC for, for like a four month. And after that, the research is good. Uh, they wanted to spread all the hospitals in Singapore. That would be a really great chance for us to spread our solutions in overseas countries. Cool. Uh, absolutely. It does sound like a great opportunity. Um, if that's it, is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, the floor is yours. If not, um, I think we've learned a lot. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, uh, so thank you. Thank you everyone for coming in. Um, certainly learned a lot from all the companies having a, a whole variety of different technologies that have been presented as well. Um, really do appreciate it. Uh, before I do the final, final wrap up, I would ask for any uh, final words from Clement, uh, any thoughts, any ideas, or just an overall uh, view of the future and, and what we can look forward to uh, in these fields or anything you'd like to add. Um, Clement, if you could just give your thoughts. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, like every company I saw today is pretty interesting. Um, 
as I mentioned at the beginning, is totally different from uh, what we see in Europe, um, where it's more more older uh, kind of industries. Um, that was really interesting, and I think uh, I think these companies will do pretty well in the future. And yeah, I hope I hope you guys uh, at some point, if you are not planning yet to go to Europe, I hope at some point you you plan to come. Okay, thank you so much, Clement. Um, much appreciated, Clement. Jean from Startup World. Uh, appreciate you being here, asking questions, as well as giving your inputs. Um, I want to say thank you also to everyone who was able to join us, our team here uh, in Pongo Techno Valley, as well as Hills Robotics, Cox Space, SAM Corporation, SEM Corporation, Bluefield, Laplace Technologies, and Nuvi Lab. Um, if you are watching this video and you need more information, uh, I highly encourage you to check out their websites. There's certainly a lot of it, uh, different, it's just a big variety of information from, um, from consumer products all the way to corporate focused B2B you know, business opportunities here. So make sure to check out all those companies uh, here. That's gonna wrap it up today as we take a look at some of the issues in, in technology and startup communities and especially in Pangyo and how that may relate to the European markets today. Uh, again, thank you to everyone who was able to join us. Hopefully we will be creating a lot more opportunities in the future and uh, certainly look forward to seeing some of you again. And uh, just a reminder, if you are gonna be in CES, at CES, uh, say hello. And uh, it'd be great to see you there as well. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, that's gonna wrap it up. That is the end of our uh, October 2022 Pangyo monthly online meetup and uh, best of luck to all the organizations out there. Uh, and of course, anyone who will come on to our uh, monthly meetups in the future, but best of luck and uh, we'll see you next time. Goodbye everyone.